I mean, gravity, of course, is something that has, uh, well, many people have already thought about it. it. It's something that we see every day, and it's not like it's uh, not existent in our every life. But what I mean by that it's an illusion is that uh, one would eventually like to know where it comes from, an explanation. Uh, up to now, we have, uh, uh, well, descriptions. I mean, Newton, of course, is the, the one famous for, for first writing down a theory of gravity. And uh, he could describe why apples fall and, and why the moon goes around the Earth using the same uh, basic equation for gravity. But um, he described it. Uh, he had to assume that gravity was there. And um, then, then had to write down a, a law that described that when two masses are at a certain distance, how they attract each other. But he was also not very happy with the fact that he should just well, assume that these things, uh, these objects, uh, attract each other and without even anything in between. So if there are two masses in empty space, there's no, uh, nothing that, that really happens between them, but still they're, they're attracting each other. And he thought that was kind of um, mysterious and, and that it was something he would have had liked to explain uh, in a better way. So later came Einstein, and Einstein, uh, with his uh, theory of relativity, eventually uh, re realized that also gravity has to be described in a different way. And it took him quite some years, but then eventually he wrote down a theory where um, he thought about uh, space and time together. And then his explanation of what gravity would be is that uh, uh, there's masses uh, which curve um, space and time. And then the motion of planets and of the Earth around the moon, or the moon around the Earth, uh, is, is then described by um, thinking about moving in this curved space-time and how then objects are, are uh, well, making their, their orbits. And the reason they go around then in circles is that, um, that space and time itself is curved in the sense that things don't move in straight lines anymore, they, they, they go around. So that was his explanation, but he had to write down an uh, equation for it uh, which again assumed that gravity is there because he, he basically wrote down that, that the matter uh, curves uh, the space-time. Um, so in a certain way that's still uh, a descript description or you, what I should say is, well, one would like to understand again why uh, this description sort of, um, well, how, how you can, can understand it from a more basic point of view. So what I've done in my paper is try to uh, start from a, uh, well, from a point of view where you don't uh, assume gravity to be there. You would like to uh, explain it uh, by seeing how you can derive it from a more microscopic uh, set of equations where, where gravity itself is not assumed, but then just follows from a certain uh, logical reasoning. If you think about uh, particles, very tiny particles, then it turns out that, that things like positions and velocities are not uh, very precisely defined. Uh, you have to take into account the fact that there's an uncertainty in, in, in when we look at something. Uh, we may influence uh, the measurement, but we may also just, there's an, a fundamental limit on how um, um, precise you can understand the position or the velocity of a particle. They cannot be all, all uh, not both described uh, infinitely precise. So uh, taking gravity into account then gives us a bit of a problem because then we have to talk about space-time and, and uh, then these quantum uncertainties gives us uh, another way of looking at space-time at the short distances. So uh, this led to problems and, and string theory uh, is another uh, way of also looking at gravity and quantum mechanics which I've been working on uh, quite a bit. Um, so people have studied uh, the problem of quantum gravity, of quantum mechanics and gravity from various perspectives, from string theory, but also by thinking, for instance, about black holes, what happens uh, with black holes. And uh, I've taken some of the things we've learned about it and, and uh, seen that there is some explanation of maybe where gravity then comes from, uh, from those uh, yeah, new way of thinking about quantum mechanics and gravity together. Um, so if you then start uh, trying to explain where it comes from, it has to do with uh, the fact that there's, um, at a microscopic scale, a certain uh, information about how you describe this, which we don't see ourselves, we, we forget about that. And uh, it turns out that if you take that into account in some appropriate way, that you can understand where, where uh, gravity uh, comes from.
the, the theory that, that Einstein wrote down, um, um, when you apply it, for instance, to these black holes, uh, you see that it uh, starts resembling things that, that we call thermodynamics. That's a, a theory that um, describes how, how um, gases move when they give them a temperature or when, when there is pressure and, and you, um, well, you can apply it in very many uh, situations, but it's some way in which we describe how things happen at, at very large, fairly large scales in terms of uh, not looking at the individual motion of uh, the atoms and molecules, but by just thinking about these objects like temperature, pressure, and so on, which uh, are what I call microscopic uh, quantities. I mean, a temperature is something that is just an average of all of the um, motions or the collis little collisions of, of uh, atoms, say, for instance, on my skin. If I think about what temperature I feel, it says something about the average energy that each of the molecules in the air is carrying. So temperature is not really a microscopic thing I can define. And uh, so gravity is somewhat like that in the sense that, that uh, the, thing, the equations that we currently use to describe gravity uh, are basically uh, obtained from averaging or at least describing things at a much tinier scale and then forgetting about uh, certain details. So temperature, for instance, also forgets about how uh, all of the individual molecules are moving. We don't have to keep track of that. But still, we can describe quite well how gases move when we just talk about pressure and temperature and, and even differences in pressure, for instance. Then if you have one um, room with one pressure and another room with lower pressure, you simply know that the gas will fl flow from one uh, to the other. And these kind of differences is uh, then necessary to get things moving. It's fun to think about uh, things like gravity and um, even well, what I had in my paper, things like even the laws of Newton, uh, because they do play a role in, in one's everyday life. But it's surprising that when I go and walk out the door and something like that, it's not like I immediately sort of think about uh, these things in a different way. But um, um, for me, I think it's more important eventually what will be the implications for uh, understanding not just gravity, but also uh, what's happening in, in, in the universe. I mean, the uh, gravity equations of Einstein are also used in, in describing the um, expansion of the universe. The Big Bang theory are all based on these same equations. Um, what I hope is that, that the ideas that, that we are now starting to develop for, for gravity can eventually sort of lead to a, possibly a, a somewhat better or even more refined way of thinking about the early universe. And I think that will uh, influence a little bit more my thinking than, um, uh, yeah, I think as human beings we like to know uh, where we come from and how the universe sort of, sort of developed into what it's now. And there I think eventually this will, will have some impact. Yeah. Mm -hmm.